everybody who's on board. Thank you for joining AutoWorks Insights today. And this session is getting your finances in order. And I am so excited. And the reason I'm excited because we have a lot of great people that are amongst us in Detroit. And while things are, are very rocky and we're a coronavirus hotspot, there are just a lot of beautiful things and beautiful people that can help us leapfrog to the next level of, of our existence. And so we created this so that people can, you know, even though we may be sad and we've lost a lot of friends, because I know I've lost a lot of friends in this time frame, that this is an opportunity to grow and expand. I am so excited to have my friend, Gail Perry Mason. As I was saying earlier, she is what I call a powerhouse of powerhouses. But the one thing I love about her is that not only is she a powerhouse in the financial world and been all over the world, she wrote this book called Girl, uh, Get Your Finances in Order, and it landed on the Oprah Winfrey show, which, you know, all of us want to be on Oprah's show, right? Even just a snippet a lot of time. But beyond all her successes in her financial world, she's a real down-to-earth, real person. Um, and I, I chuckle when I was just saying before you guys came on board, she's a hugger. So every time I've ever seen her, she hugs everybody. Half the time, I don't, do you know everybody you hug? Right now, no. <laughs> no, I didn't think you did. But she, but she's such a hugger. Um, I want to know how she's gonna survive after coronavirus is over, since she loves to hug everybody. And with that being said, I'd like to introduce to you Gail Perry Mason, um, and she's gonna talk to us a little bit about some insights and getting your finances in order. Um, and that's not to say that your finances are out of order, because in this time frame, there's a lot of money flowing in and some things that you can do to improve your existence. And with that being said, I introduce to you, Gail Perry Mason. Gail. Hey, how are hey, you? I am fabulous. <laughs> I'm glad to see you today. Woman. I love that introduction. I'm like, look at you. But you the powerhouse, girl, please. You're a powerhouse, too. I'm now. trying to keep up with you, girl. <laughs> oh, girl, please. You are the powerhouse. So, no. So, thank you. Thank you for, this is just a lunch with, with friends. And that's what it is today. So, it's a lunch with friends. So, I appreciate you asking me to come on and have lunch with you. I appreciate that. I appreciate the introduction. I appreciate catching up with you too. So yes. but you, and I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, just what you're doing with your whole movement that you've been on for a long time, but I appreciate this movement and I appreciate how you bring people together and the technology. I mean, you were ahead of the curve. And I was just yeah. talking about you earlier. You were ahead of the curve and I don't know how you did that, but you're like, look, People need to learn online. People need to do this. People need to get a license in this. Like you, but you've always been ahead of the curve with so many different things. So, and you are an, also a wonderful mom. You are also a hugger. And let me just say this: even though you know we talk about money or talk about this or talk about that, um, I always, you know, I do a money camp for children, and I always teach them: don't ever love anything that can't love you back. You know, I hug. I have like a few hundred kids every summer or everywhere I go. I hug someone. Mm -hmm. This has been, social distancing has been difficult. I'm not even going to tell you. If mm -hmm. I see somebody, I'm running down a river walk, I see somebody I'm like, oh, we got to yep. just do, yep. I've been doing nothing but virtual <laughs> hugs. But, and I don't know if you know this, so I, my hand is, it's, matter of fact, it's healing now, but my hand was broken February 22nd, then I had to go in for surgery. And then after I went in for surgery and I had to get pins in and take it out, God, I mean, God didn't do it, of course, I got to do it, but it protected me from hugging so many people, getting used to like, okay, I gotta protect my hand because it was in a cast, it was in this, I was just, yeah, it was just, it was real tender and it's still that way. So it got me in the, so anyway, everything happens for a reason. I was running and I fell and I broke my fall. But anyway, I'd rather have a broken hand than a broken heart. So I'm yes. good and it's, this will heal. And so, but I do, I cannot tell you Oh, and this hugging people, you, you know, I know. So anyway, I'll give you a virtual hug right now. So definitely, <laughs> I received that. So, um, but I know, I know you want to talk about, uh, like, just, you know, during this time, people are worried. Yes, yeah, you already know, people are worried about their money, people are worried about their families, people are worried about their jobs, people are worried about security, stability, everything. And this is why, you know, I always say, like, well, in the book, you know, I talk about, Everybody needs five avenues of income. But the main thing I think people do need is their personal board of directors. So this is a time, like, if you have any moments, like, I'm busier than ever now. Before Me honest. too. 
But aren't you? I know you are. Well, heck, yeah, this is your world. Like, this is your world. So, um, but I ended up, uh, you know, talking about we need our personal board directors. And I've been like rearranging my board directors around. Now, everybody needs a personal board directors, whether they know you're on it or not. Like, I, I know you sit on people's board and you don't even, they don't even know that you, I mean, you don't even know you're on their board. But people just watch what you're doing and say, hey, I need her on my board just by watching you and seeing what you do because success leaves clues. So that's why. So first of all, get people who are successful on your board of directors. Success always leaves clues, no matter what. And then another thing, start looking at different like different sites and different things. Like it's one, I was just going to tell everybody here, go to, it's two sites, as you well, it's three sites you need on your personal board of directors. So not only do you need people on there, you need websites out there, you need apps on there. The mm -hmm. app everybody needs, of course, is mint.com. The sites as a finance buzz is another great one. Mm -hmm, that is. Put them, and I love that. Put them on your board of board directors. Put, I mean, if you're older, put AARP on your board of directors. This is a great one. Even if you're not even older, they are like, they have amazing information that comes in right now that is just like amazing. And it's, it's absolutely free. So they have a free newsletter, free everything, like how to get cheaper car insurance, how to do different things. So there's so much information out here now. Now's the time you need to do that. Then this is a time to talk to attorneys, talk to, you know, whether it's a financial advisor, whether it's a, uh, a pastor, whether it's a fitness person. People are doing fitness classes online for free. If you want to get fit, now's the time to say, hey, you know what? I'm taking this fitness class with this person. I'll put them on our personal board of directors. So not only we need to get our finances together, we need to get our health together. Because now with COVID, we found out what's the most important thing? Having health. You know, our health. Vitamin D, that's what the heck. I'd rather have, you know, be broke and not have COVID. I mean, you know, not be on a ventilator. Right. So you look at that. It's like, wait a minute. Let me see. Let me see what I can, you know. Let me see. So the first thing that should be important, like, let me make sure I have a great, and you know, and doctor. And if I don't, let me try to find someone that I can talk to. Let me go to, you know, what uh, web? Let me go to different, you know, what's that? Oh my God, WebMD, WebMD too to go on. Like, let me see. These are my symptoms, or you know, whatever it could be. So, uh, not just even a cold too, high blood pressure, everything. Mm -hmm. So, what can I do to lower my blood pressure? You know, if I eat, you know, even if I eat sugar, what will happen to me? You know what I mean? So, we gotta like start doing our diet. So start doing things. Put people on your personal. Heck, heck, Oprah's on my board of directors. Melody Apple's on my board of directors. Like, they don't even know it. So people are on my board of directors, and they have no clue that they're on my board of directors. So. And it's funny you should say that, because that the documentary of Becoming just came out. Did you see it? I haven't yet. I'm going to a watch party tonight to see it. Okay. Because even though we're social distancing, I'm still trying to do my little party thing. Um, but the thing is that Michelle Obama's on my my personal board of directors. Oh, okay. I've never met the lady. My daughter had an opportunity to meet her when she came to Wayne State, and she said she's a hugger too, right? I don't know how she's fearing during the time frame because she hugged my daughter, and she would say, oh, I'm never going to wash my body. Went, no, baby, yes, you are. But uh, so she's, um, you, you don't necessarily need to know people to have them on your board of directors, right. but you by studying their backgrounds, by studying their behaviors, by studying what they do, that's how they become part of your personal board of directors. You learn from them intimately and from mm -hmm. the sources that they create to help round you out. That's right. And that's Michelle Obama's on my hand too, girl. I love Michelle Obama. Matter of fact, we're doing a thing where we're giving out uh, her journal to people on Friday. I'm, you know, doing this, uh, Matter of fact, I'll just mention it to you while we're on here. Yes. I'm doing a, you know, Forever 39. We started this, you know, middle-aged women trapped in the kitchen. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm drinking cayenne pepper right now and water, but, uh, and lemon. But, um, that's right, coughing. But, um, so we do trapped in the kitchen every Friday night where seasoned women hang out in the kitchen. And so we do different things. So we're doing a bra movement. And, uh, oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are, so bras is for frontline, you know, essential workers. So it means brilliant, resilient, and amazing. So <coughs> and I, as I'm coughing, I'm so sorry, that's my, and now I'm drinking this cayenne pepper and lemon. That's all I have here to drink. So. Are, you, are you dieting? Is that what that is? Girl, a diet just means did I eat today? So I'm not, I don't diet. So <laughs> it's just lifestyle. 
Okay. But cayenne pepper and all of this, you know, makes your, builds up your immune system. Right. And so it's a lemon and vitamin D and everything. So I've been drinking this, but it also helps you lose weight. Grandma always died. I mean, I'm always looking for ways, of course, to, uh, <coughs> to lose weight, to do different things. So, and I've been running. I've still been running. Okay, so, so I running. run, okay. I do different things. Like yes, yeah, so I'm still running and everything else. So I've been, you know, trying to, you know, lose weight. I always say from a full figure woman to a seven figure woman, a woman's guide to shifting her assets is what we all need to do is shift our assets. So a different way. So mm -hmm. that's what we need to do. But, uh, and increase those assets and these assets should be less. So that's what I'm trying to do. But, um, but um, so the bra movement, we are giving out bras to, you know, people who work at the grocery store, people, nurses, everyone to say, hey, let's keep you lifted. Let's stay close to your heart, never leave you hanging and support you. So we've been doing that. So we've been doing a lot of different things on Friday just to, you know, just we call it trapped in the kitchen, but we've been lifting up women all week long. And right now I have like 40 bras sitting in my living room ready to give out to these women. I'm so excited to do that. So, but it's a way to lift up women and mostly essential workers on the front line are women that are exchanging yeah. dollars for hours. And that, those are ones who really need help. What are you saying, Ida? I said, yeah, I noticed that. And, and, you know, a lot of them are getting sick because we're, we're breathing on them. Right. Yeah. And then they are taking it home to their families. Right. So I know a couple of women that were, doing, you know, that we're helping out right now and they don't have a way home. They need Could over. You, so can you please spell your first and last name? J-A-H-A-R-A. Somebody, I'm going to put you on mute because I hear -A -M -M -A. someone. H-A-M-M. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I'm going to mute them. Hold on here. If everybody, if you could mute yourself, that would be great. Um, because I hear someone uh, in the back. Hold on. Oh, oh, I'll mute this person. I got you. Okay. No, oh, that's okay. Right. So, but the one thing is to get your finances in order. We already know that. We got a girl. We all need a personal board of directors. We need that to get our life in order and mm -hmm. our health. So we're talking about finances and health and everything else. We have to get that all in order. So, and to get that in order, and we can't do it overnight. So the other thing that you need is, you know, whether it's spiritual also, you know, we need somebody who can help us out spiritually, somebody who can help us out physically. And then who do you look up to? Like you said, Michelle Obama, which is great. I said her, but who do we want to, like you said, becoming Michelle Obama, becoming Gail, becoming Ida, becoming whoever you are. Then who are, who do you want to become? Like we need to have like a one-year plan, a five-year plan. And that's why we need that board of directors and it can change at any time. So, but we do need to have, you know, an accountant to go to, a lawyer to go to, you know, for estate planning. Either you do estate planning or the state's going to plan it for you. So right. we do need to get things in order. So there's so many things that we can do, but the first thing to do is to, and that's why I love Mint, because it tracks your money and gives you a report card every Friday. And then when you do that, you know, you say, hey, where am I going to go? You can't even make a plan until you know where everything's going. And then once you do that, then you say, hey, let me figure, let me make some layoffs. You are your chief life officer. So you do need to make layoffs in your life. So during this time, we can see what, well, dang, I don't really need all that I really have. Like, I don't need all these, you know, cable stations, or I can call up Comcast and say, hey, can you delete some stations? Or this is the best time to call up Comcast and say, hey, either I'm gonna lay you off or you're gonna give me a discount. This is the best time to say, hey, can you lower my car insurance? Everybody's lowering car insurance right now. This is the best time to say, hey, I got kids. I'm homeschooling at home. How, what, how low will my Comcast bill go to? And it'll go down to like 13 bucks a month. So there's a lot of different things that we can do to lay off, to make some layoffs. So go down like your bills. Same thing with the grocery stores. You know, everybody's having big deals on right now. This is the time to do it. You're going to do a Christmas shopping? Heck, now's the time really to go online and do something. If you really need to buy something, we, found, we don't really need all stuff. What really matters is time spent with people. So we need to do things that and start and reevaluate ourselves as our chief life officer, put together your board, but make layoffs. You don't need all the stuff. And now's the time to go ahead and, and get rid of a lot of your things too and purge because that's what we're finding out while we're at home. Like we don't need all this. And so what does it really take to live? And we, we're spending so much money on food and we're, we really need all the food to be happy either. So this is the time to do this. And where do we spend most of our money? 
food, eating out, Starbucks, whatever. And now it's like, do you really need Starbucks anymore? Do you not that I'm saying don't go? I love the CEO of Starbucks and Melly happens on the board. I'm not saying anything, but but do we really need to spend that much money at Starbucks? So what are we doing now? So we have to look at follow our dollar and none of you. So this way, every dollar should have a place to go. None of your money should ever be homeless. So it should always have a place to go. Uh, another thing between making layoffs, between doing that, um, then once you make layoffs, get your board of directors together, then that's when you decide, okay, where's my money going to go after that? So that's when you know, like, you know, whether you pay down the highest debt first and all of that, that's when you get like a green path on your board of directors. That's when you get a money coach on your board of directors. You, you should have Dorothea. Do you know Dorothea and Kelly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need a money coach on your personal board of directors, somebody like a Robin Thompson yeah. or Dorothea Kelly, somebody like that. You need them on your board of directors. So to say, hey, this is, and they will coach you on this. And then people need, do you have a life coach? I don't know if you have a life coach. I technically don't. And part of okay. that is Ida Bird Hill Spot because I've been a coach myself. So I figured I could coach myself, but I picked up a new mentor who kind of sort of has been my coach. Oh, okay. Okay. Any, anybody who's doing surgery on themselves is a fool, right? Absolutely. I, that, I was like, you know, you're right. But, you know, but, but partly because I've been a financial advisor for 10 years, I said, well, I don't really need that. I know that stuff. They said, well, you may know it, but the question is, are you doing it? <laughs> right. <laughs> so you, to myself, you're right, which, which kind of inspired this actual show, because I realized a lot of people may have the knowledge, but are they doing it in the middle of this crisis? Um, right. And so... No, I don't technically have a coach, but I have this mentor who's been kind of coaching me along. Okay, but that's that, that's good then, because we have to be coachable. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to be coachable. Every, but every day is a day that we learn something new. Another thing, another great website. Do you ever go to the Penny Hoard or do you ever use that? No, I haven't. Is that the one with the coupons? Oh my God, no, the Penny Hoard is everything. It has different ways. It sends you a way to create money every single day. It's called the Penny Hoarder. Cool, it is check that out. Oh my God, it's the bomb. So the penny hoarder, and I don't know. Uh, and I bought, so I did bring some resources too, because during this time, I mean, this is a time when we all need resources. So we all need to have more than one avenue of income, always have five avenues of income. Wow. And really expand on that, because I'm going to tell you, when I read your book a few years mm -hmm. ago, that kind of got me really motivated mm -hmm. because I, I've always thought you should have at least a couple avenues but when you said five and then I had to wow. laugh at you because I see you running around because you have your five always in motion um, and I have to say to Gail while she's telling you to cut back and be a penny hoarder she lives a really good life but she's very frugal in some things I know she people are like you you don't drive. drive I know I probably don't drive you know I don't drive you know nice car I'm not I'm not in the cars you know my, where my, my son is one of my signs, but I'm not into cars. I'm not into, you know, clothes. I'm not into jewelry. I'm not into, well, I'm not, in, I normally get my hair done every six weeks. Of course, it hasn't been done. This is the first time I, I wet it and put some, some, something on it. I got from a sale. I'm not a sale, a conference, some Carol door. Anyway, so my hair probably looks a mess right now. You know what it looks like. But, um, but the thing is, so I'm not, that's what I'm, I'm into buying pearls for other people. Mm -hmm. So most of my money really goes to giving, to be honest. So that's what I normally do. And like if, if I have and you don't have, then we don't have. I speak French a lot. So that's, and I know you never met a poor giver. And poor stands for Passover opportunity repeatedly. The thing is, and that's what I do, you've always given people opportunity to make money. You give, you give them an opportunity to learn how to fish. That's what you do which is better than just giving them an item rather than giving them a dollar. That's what you have done your whole entire life, which is a blessing. So sometimes people will come to me and say, hey, you know, I need resources or I need this or I need that. And I'll try to do that, but it's so hard to, I love what you're doing is coming out with the institution and a whole movement that does that. You know, I don't do that, but I just try to say, hey, you know, you need to have different avenues of income. Whether you can freelance, write on a blog, whether you can, oh, God, let me see if I even have these. And I can give out a few if you want me to, but you know, there's different things how you can purge what you have at home. 
there's so many different ways to sell different things now. Oh my God, it's just, it's so much out there that you can do. And the main thing is you always want to make money while you're sleeping. Like, like Eddie, you have, you know, your business is going all the time. There's different things you can do it. And I know you teach entrepreneurship all the time. So I don't teach entrepreneurship. I try to do what I can and I try to teach my kids and I, you know, take a couple hundred kids every summer and I teach them entrepreneurship. But now I, now that I've been, you know, here and trying to, you know, work from home and try to, I still go in the office a few times to make sure I can buy lunch for everyone uh, three times a week. But I try to, you know, talk to them. Like one is making cakes on the side. One is doing different things. Like, turn your passion into payment. Everybody has their divine assignment. Everybody has a passion. Everybody has something that they can do to create other avenues of income. You know, whether it's, you know, of course, we talk about investing every day, but whether it's, you know, and I'm not going to talk about today, but I mean, just, you know, whether it's investing or whether it's, you know, real estate, whether it, whatever it may be, there's something that you can do it. Now's the time to do it. Now's the time to get the knowledge to know how to do it. Now's the time if you want to start your own business. I mean, oh my God, this is this is the time to get prepared. I'm not saying start your business like now. But this is a time for preparation. This is definitely time to plant seeds. This is definitely time for preparation. So when I say five avenues of income, there could be a lot of different things that you can do. But you can, you know, surveys. People will pay you to take surveys, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give out a few sites if you want me to. Yes. I do. Yes. Okay, and I give out some that I always give out with my my kids and my everywhere I go. But um, you know, of course, well, with movies, we're not going to movies anymore. But um, you know, if you ever when the movies open up, don't pay to go to the movies. Go to GoFobo G O F O B O dot com or Advanced Screening. So we can always do that. Another way when you go shopping. Uh, it's a place called Gig Walk, G-I-G Walk. And you get, you know, people will, you earn money while you're shopping. Uh, and of course, a lot of people probably know about Ebates already. If you need to get a fragrance, always go to fragrance.net. Um, but to get paid to shop, that's it. So that's it, getting paid to shop. Service Scouts, realitybasedreports.com or gig spot so you always want to like if you're going to go shopping you might as well just go ahead and get paid to shop um i'm going to see i know i have a few more in here another thing oh my god i gotta tell all of your everybody who's on here take one day and i do it on mondays and like i say get your board of directors together get all of that together take a mind your own business day every monday that's the day you can call Comcast and say, hey, I want my, you know, this cut off. I want this lower, this bill lower, or my insurance lower, or whatever. Just take a mind your own business day. We all need to take a mind your own business day. And your health. I mean, we need to get our health together. We need to get our board directors together. We need to get things together. Our, you know, whether we're going to start a business, where we're going to, you know, work with Ida on something. Like, okay, I'm going to take this class. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, you know, whatever it is. Do that and journal it and keep things, you know, and keep things together. But, Definitely take a mind your own business day. Talk about uh, the journaling because you know uh, it's I've been a journaling for thirty five, almost forty years. Well, I'm getting old. Um, you've been doing what? Journaling for forty years. You just oh my god! Don't you love journaling? I love tell journaling. Me, tell people why you why you journal. Oh, uh, I've been journaling. Oh my god! I've probably been journaling forty. Probably we both been journaling forever, uh, for over forty years. Uh, mm -hmm. I journal. I have I have a gratitude journal too. I have a gratitude jar. I always write what I'm thankful for in. Mm -hmm. But then I journal because sometimes when, even if you're upset with someone or anything else, you can write it down. And you don't even have to talk to that person. You can get it off your mind. You can get it off your heart. It's kind of like your therapist book too, you know. And everybody needs a therapist too. I'm not going to say I don't have a therapist, even though, you know, I don't have one. But but we do need, and sometimes I, you know, I'll just call my friends who are therapists, Dr. Rose Moten or someone, and talk to her for a little bit. But, um, but we journaling is like you writing it down to keep track. And sometimes, oh my God, you ever gone back, Ida, and look at your old journals and read them? It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I made it through this. I can't believe, you know, that I even wrote down what I want. Words are powerful. Even you can write down things and say, hey, I really want this to happen. I really want, you know, our words are powerful. Mm -hmm. Writing down things is powerful. 
that I think journaling is so therapeutic and that I think journaling is powerful. And I think journaling is just great for, and that's why I'm doing these Michelle Obama journals for the, you know, our frontline heroes, our essential workers along with the broadly keep them lifted because I think journaling keeps you lifted also. So tell us why you journal. I, I journal for two reasons. First of all, I have flashes of innovation. Mm-hmm. And what I learned when I was about 10, things come and I don't remember them. And then you just, they just come to you and then they go. So mm-hmm. I keep a journal by my, actually I carry one with me all the time, but I also keep one by my bedside because when things come to me, I write them down, even if they're crazy, because <laughs> a lot of crazy things come to you. Um, and I write them down, but they're like flashes of genius to me. Um, and, and I don't remember them. You know, and so what I've done is when I write them down, I go back and read some of those things mm-hmm. and then I implement them because after you, you, they come and you sit down and you say, oh, I can't believe I wrote that. And then you try to flush it out. That's a grand idea. And I, and I give you a good example. I, I have a board game called Fluke. And I went to this um, school district and one of the kids had asked, why do I need to learn science, technology, engineering, math? And I really didn't like the response I got. And I said to myself, I need to fix that. And just wrote it in my journal, didn't think anything else of it. But then I was re- refreshing my looking at the journal on New Year's Eve because I try to sum up my life of what I did for the year. And I mm-hmm. looked at the journal and saw that I said, oh, I did say I was going to work on that. I'm going to get back to that this upcoming year. And so I worked on it for the rest of the year, that, ne- that new year. So I write because I, flashes of genius come to me. And I think it probably comes to everybody. We just don't think right. about it. Right, all the time, yeah. Crazy. But I said, just write it down. And then you can always get back to it and flesh it out, or you may just dismiss it, but at least you wrote it down and says, oh, I thought of that. Because sometimes I believe the God, the universe, the higher power, whoever you call it as, sends us things and we just overlook Mm -hmm. it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So I started doing this. So so this is my my, thing. I probably learned from you because you use technology a lot. But um, so I journal still, but... I write like different notes every day. I have like different subjects. When it comes to me, I'll take my phone, like, oh my God, I gotta put this in. So I put it in my notes. Yeah. So like my, so the other day I just wrote down under board of directors because I keep my board of directors stuff. And I put someone that can help you with your blind spots. Things that we can't see that others can see or mm-hmm. someone who challenges your assumptions because we assume so much. So I just wrote down like, okay, that came to me. And then you know, my bra awards, I got bra awards on here. It came up with an idea one day. Um, just different things like, um, um, I even have one that just great ideas, mm-hmm. under great ideas. I just keep putting it under that. So, um, you know, I, I just, just different things like that. So I, you know, next thing here, how to translate your experience. So I just write them all down. So. I've been putting everything in here, you know, the same exact way, like that, um, you know, um, like one day I just put down as one of my subjects, like life is a a potluck, make sure you bring something to the table. So I put it down, like how we serve, how we do things. So all of my things, you know, and right here I got, you know, my Melody Hobson on here. So, um, and then my gratitude list of support, you know, I have like everything on here, you know, like that. So keep your eyes on the source one step at a time, you know, um, and then, you know, what's on your menu, like order everything got, got for you. So I put stuff like that in here, like this is my, now I have it on my phone. So I do that. And I think that that is so powerful to just what you said, things come to you all the time. So I think if we write it down and, and, but the thing is, we could write it down and if it's a great idea, then, I mean, of course you execute it. Execution yeah. is the key. And that's when the board of directors come in, in because you have an execution team. So you want somebody to help you execute. You want somebody to help you do things. So we need to have, and, and even when it comes to everything, like, okay, I'm gonna meet with a financial planner, I'm gonna meet with an accountant, I'm gonna meet with an insurance person, I'm gonna do this. What's your deadline? What's your execution date? You need to know that. And then you need an exit strategy. Once you get in a business, once you get in an investment, whatever it may be, everybody needs an exit strategy. 
So I think that's when you need your board director. It's like, hey, you gonna help me with my exit strategy? What, what are we gonna do? Will you be there for me? Like, because when you're getting ready to leave or do different things in your life, you need a support team. You need coaches. You need support. Everybody needs support. That's why I always do this bra thing because it's all in the bra. Even though I know we got men on here, but it's all in the bra. You know, the support. Never leave you hanging. Stay close to your heart. And, you know, and, and, and you know, lifts you up. We all need to be lifted up. We all need to be, you know, just taken care of in just certain ways. And, and I think this COVID-19, I'm hoping people will come out of it kinder, more compassionate, more lifting each other up and more uh, mindful and more resourceful because now is the time we need our resources. And, and I don't know if anybody would want, I mean, there's a lot of different grant application fees at Wayne State University right now. People want to go to Wayne State or uh, family resources where it comes to uh, utility, relief, or free Wi-Fi or housing or more, go to COVID-313. COVID-313, have you ever been on there? No. Okay, well, they need to do that. And then the DPS, you know, they have resources too. But for food, for uh, there's a lot of different food for websites. There's a lot of different resources. Like if you want, like everyoneon.org is one for our kids to learn, you know, while they're online. Because a lot of kids, you know, really can't learn right now. But this is a time too, I always tell people to photography. Do you know, I don't know if anybody on here likes to take pictures, but you can make so much money. And that's what I tell people, just by taking pictures and uploading them to, you know, one stock, you know, uh, one stock photo or all different Etsy or Shutterfly or wherever, but you can do that. But Nikon, do you know they have free photography classes now? No, I didn't. Yeah, they do. And then there's free meditation courses, meditation website. Um, so they have free meditation sources. So, because people are stressed now too. DTE is helping people. Sprint is helping people. AT and T is helping people. So, I think, um, and then get your line on business. It's another one called Webinar Link. It's a webinar link that helps you put that on business. And then, uh, it's another thing. It's a local bartender. You know, you can support your own local bartender right now too. No. Yeah. So, oh my God, there's so many things. And then for nonprofits to expand, it's a uh, Kiva, Kiva application link. So there's so many resources out here. Um, and then they also have a uh, Black Leaders Detroit. It's a village fund application for that. And it's uh, for black owned businesses and stuff. BLD Google form. Just, I mean, there's so many different resources that are available. Um, and if you want to, like, it's a whole site dedicated to resources, grants, and more. It's called Startup Space. So, and then even to learn how to get your finances in order in accounting, U of M has accounting courses that are free right now. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. U of M accounting courses. So just, okay. I mean, there's so many different things mm -hmm. out here that I think that we could all use and take advantage of during this time. And we could come out on the other side you know, as a better person, more knowledgeable, more resources, and of course, kinder and more compassionate. So pretty much what you're saying, the five streams of income can, a lot of them could be online. So if I'm not yes. taking pictures, I can make money by uploading the pictures and getting paid. Yes. Yes. And see, People and make a ton of money doing that. Yes. And see, and it's funny because I, I've done that after I, after I read your book, you know, you made me really a lot busier. I don't know if I should be happy about that or sad, but um, I actually do business plans. And so I, I, oh. I get a lot of things from Fiverr and I said, let me post a seller option on there so that I can do a business plan for other people. And I actually automated in a real estate office in California and I've never met the person. <laughs> no. Because automated. Are you and still doing business plans for people? Because I, I am. Oh, girl, then, okay, done. Like, I I have so many referrals for you. Okay, perfect. I would love to do that. And so and okay. so I get paid through Fiverr and what have you, what have you. So, I, so one of the things I wanted you to be online, because you're so resourceful, that finances is not just about what you make. It's also about what you keep. So, but you yeah. got to have a, a delicate balance of doing both. And I think it's what, what happens is you get so And it's what you give. It's what you give, too. Right. 
it's what you keep, it's what you give. So I think that's, it's a holistic approach, you know, to, you know, to, to money. Money flows, it's currency, it flows, and that's just it. So it flows to you, you can attract it, and you can subtract it too by doing things, by doing different things. We've all made financial mistakes, you know that. Mm -hmm. so, right. so we can do both, but we have to allow to be open for it to flow to us, and God will put power behind your efforts. So, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to unmute everyone, and I want if they have any questions um, for you because you are such a plethora of um, information. And I can't see any, I can't see anybody's face, but okay. You can. Well, let me take you off a take you off a spotlight and put everybody's face there. Hold on. Oh. Because I okay. did put you in the spotlight yeah. so that people can talk. But now I'm going to take everybody off. Take you off. Look at you, Miss Techno. <laughs> Hey, you know, this is, you know what, you know, I've been working at this for, I told somebody, this has been a startup that's been going for 15 years. I know. That's so why I said, you were totally before your time. I mean, people totally. thought I was crazy. They still think I'm crazy. Um, Girl, no, you are doing it. I'm so proud of you. I don't know what to do. Thank you. Now, if anybody has any questions, I mean, this is a good opportunity to ask. And as I said again, you know, it's your local, she's here in, in our local environment and she's everywhere, right? Um, I, I don't know how we keep up with her. Girl. You know you be moving. Moving and shaking. And she be moving and shaking here, moving and shaking all over the country. So if you have any questions, you know, you could jump in. I unmuted you. Normally we would do the chat. But if, if you could just want to ask the question, go for it. I like Mr. Um, what source is, are you using, Ms. Perry? Um, Gail, to find the resources, like the ones you mentioned, because <laughs> I was trying to write them all down, but you have a main website with some of them. No. Okay, if you, you know, email me, and I'll email you the one thing I just kind of got these sources off of, the ones that, the last ones I gave out. Uh, my email is gpmason2000 at gmail. And I'm also going to post her email in the chat. So before you guys leave, you can just go to the chat and um, grab her email and you can send it over. Works. And my sister took your money management course, Amy Muhammad. She said, tell you hi, because she has another class today. Oh, so you said, so she's in my money camp? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Who's that? Who's your sister? Naima Muhammad. Oh, oh, my baby. Mm -hmm. Yes, your baby. <laughs> she said, yes, Oh my God, she is so smart and so amazing. And so, oh my God, your sister is like the bomb. You already know that, right? I do. Yeah, she's kind of awesome. I live in her shadow. <laughs> oh my God, I think we all do. So, we wanted her to speak somewhere. Um, I forgot when it was, it was a little while ago. So, we got to have, we're having something else coming up too. So, we're going to do something like online. So, you let her know we need her. You know, you know I'm, I would love to hire her this summer, so to help out with the money camp. She's the bomb, the biggest heart, but she's, we need her autograph. She is, oh my God, mm -hmm. I, if you don't know, do you know who she is? I do. Oh, mm -hmm. the bomb, like thebomb.com, like she is the bomb. Love, love, love her. And I know, but every time I see her, I hug her. I'm like, I hate, I can't, I can't. I, I'm so upset over this, so that's okay. I know I'll get a chance to hug her again. Oh my God, so you hug your sister for me, please. Will do. Okay, uh, thank you. Jahara is one of my graduate students from Automation Works Institute. Really? Ah, she, now she's brilliant too, and just as humble. Uh, well, they, I mean, that family comes from good stocks. So I met the brother too. The brother's amazing too. So that family comes from great stock. That's all I gotta tell you. You can tell where they came from. Like, they are just amazing. So, any I other questions? It. So, anybody else has any questions? Hi, my name is Amina, and I did have a question. I want to thank you first for taking the time out, uh, Miss Gale. My question is about um, trade lines. You're hearing a lot, of, like for credit repair, if you're repairing credit. Do you have any? Um, any insight on trade lines? You know what? I don't. I don't deal with credit, but I do have somebody who does. 
you want to email me, I can send you their information. Uh, I will be emailing you. <laughs> okay. Thank All right. You. <laughs> Any, any other questions? Just pop in. I have a question. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Gail, for um, sharing your great information. However, I'd like to know what websites could I go to look at in regards to maybe doing some stock trade information? Because I'm hearing stocks are so good right now. Uh, what's some good stock um, websites I can look at to possibly buy some stock? You know what? If I were you, I would look at look at Robinhood. Just look at Robinhood. Yes, good site. Robinhood is the bomb. Just look at Robinhood. Yeah, awesome. and I'm not. You know, I can't be on here like you know saying buy this, do this, do this, or whatever. But just look at it. Just do your research on Robinhood. Do your research on Stash. Do your research on you know for getting started. Just always do your research. Just I mean, I can definitely say that. Just and that's but look at them. Check them out. I promise you, you will, you'll like, wow, this is great. So, And then you, 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 that, and when you do your research, it just means that you're reading and following the market. And I actually have been investing in stocks this whole pandemic. So I've made quite a bit of money um, because I decided I wasn't going to spend my stimulus. I was going to invest it instead. <laughs> and I actually initially bought Ford Motor Company at like $2 and some cents a share. And, and it, was up, it got up to like five eighty something and now it's down at $5. So it's a good way to, to, to make money, um, but you really do have to do your homework and, and you have to, and if you, if you have a, look, a little money, go find you an advisor who can help you um, right. because they know way more than what you could ever research because they know the ins and outs of the market. One of the reasons why I brought Gail to our show, she has been in an industry, in the financial industry, which is really tough for black women for over 20 years and has excelled at it very, very well. Um, and she's seen a lot of downturns. She's seen a lot of upturns, but kind of knows the feel of the market because you've been there. Once you've been someplace, you got the experience, you know what to do. So don't feel feel like you shouldn't go get an advisor. It probably is a good time to do that as well. Any other questions? Um, hi. Yeah, I just want. This is Prestina. I just want clarification. Um, the email that you gave, Ms. Gale, um, that's going to contain the information for working from home? Um, you know, I was just going to just send you the, the sites that I get, that I had from okay. another place. So okay. I was just going to send that. So, yeah. Okay. So just, yeah, that's all. Okay. Just Thank you. Like, okay. so, Thank okay. you. Okay. Any other questions? Hi, would you mind, um, before you go, just uh, saying your email once again, please? Sure. G.P. Mason, M-A-S-O-N, 2000 at Gmail. And then you can also hit the little chat button. I also put it in the chat and sent it to everyone. So one last thing I do want to ask you, Gail, because you kind of alluded to it, but you didn't hear it. You didn't say it directly. What's that? That mindset and the way that you feel about yourself determines how you spend your money or how you make your money. Wow. Yeah, we talked about that in the book. And I noticed yeah. that you talked a lot about it in the book. But you yes. so, emphasize that. Uh, tell me, tell, because one of the things that I've noticed is that people are feeling really bad during this pandemic and they have been shopping online as their therapy. Um, and so one of the reasons why we even started Automotion Works Insight, Auto Works Insights, is because I noticed people were spending Google gobs of money because they're feeling bad, not realizing that the way you feel does impact your finances in general, mm. and that you need to kind of deal with how, where you are and how you feel so that you don't make foolish decisions. Could right. you Retail therapy, right? Retail mm -hmm. therapy, we think it makes us feel better if we could get something that... You know, if we could buy something that will think, you know, oh, this is the latest, this will make me feel good, this will do, you know, all this or the latest fad or the latest trend. So I could take an, you know, Instagram picture, especially young people. Oh, let me go on Instagram, let me do this, let me do that. So, and take a picture with this, you know, whether it's a Fendi or whatever it could be. So I think, and then we are impressionable with all the, you know, rappers or entertainers or athletes out here wearing different things. It's like, oh, let me try to get it. Like, no, they have a different budget than 
if we don't have the same budget, it's like, wait a minute, why, why would I even spend my money on that? To take a picture, to get some lights, but people you don't even know. So we gotta have that mindset. We gotta work on our self-esteem. It's not about how many check likes you get or whatever. It's not about how, um, you know, what we have on. I would rather have, you know, checks coming in than checks on, you know, liking on something. So, or money coming in. So we got to look at, you know, what our internal assets mm -hmm. mean so much more than our external assets. So our internal assets, you know, self-esteem, our emotions, our love for one another, our love for ourselves means so much more than our love for what we have on the outside. And now we're seeing it really doesn't matter that, you know, with this COVID, we're like, oh, wait, you know, not that I need that, you know, Canadian goose coat that I spent all that money on for no reason or mm -hmm. had or whatever it is, you know, just to go out here and show. And, you know, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Like what matters, you know, it's not what, what we have on. It's not what we, it's our, it's our, a big heart and a big smile and can brighten up a room better than a Gucci belt. So we've got to really get our priorities in order when it comes to spending money and just, it's just, anyway, that's, I mean, that's, that's just the way I feel, but we got to work on our internal assets and increase that during this time. And that's when it comes to self-esteem. That's when it comes to, you know, what makes you feel good about yourself. And it's not about the beauty either. It's not about, you know, what you, you know, everybody has, I always wanted braces my whole life. I never had, you know, I had a chance to buy my kids braces, but I never had a chance to get braces. And so it's not like, like, I don't have the best smile in the world, but I'm self-conscious of that. But I'm like, I'm going to smile no matter what, because if it makes somebody else day brighter, I'm going to do it no matter what. So I, with this mask, with the mask on all the time, I'm like, I can't smile. So I'm literally, I'm going to start drawing a smile on those masks, literally, <laughs> just to, you know, really just to make people smile. Because when I'm passing people on the river walk and everything, I'm like, oh, I smile. It's like, they can't see even my cheeks going up. It's like I'm smiling at them. And I think that brightens people day. So it's not about I'm running in. My godson is an ambassador for Lululemon, so he'll get me some Lululemon stuff for free. And it's like, oh my God. So I'll, you know, not that, and I love wearing Lululemon or anything else, but it's not that I even have on Lululemon. I want people to see me smile at them. It's not that. So it's, that's what, and that's another thing too. Like I told you, my godson, his name is Armand. He gets Lululemon stuff, and then he'll gift it to me as his mom all the time. So, um, but, you can become an ambassador for a product. I have a lot of my kids, and I say my kids, but they become ambassadors for products. And that's how they get products for free. They become an ambassador for, you know, whatever product it is. So just start looking at what you want to and become an ambassador for that product. So if you're not getting paid to wear that product, if you're not getting that product for free, I would not spend all that money on it. I'm sorry, that's just me. And if I didn't get my stuff from my godson, I wouldn't be wearing that. So I just gotta say, that's it. So I get most of my stuff on Groupon at a cheaper rate. So I'll do that. Oh. And then it's funny that you said you would like to have a mask with a smile on it. That sounds like a business opportunity to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like I'm going to draw my little smile on it today when I go out running. So I'm definitely going to do that. So I hope somebody looking for an opportunity. There are probably other people who want a, a mask with a smile on it. Somebody can make one, right? I know because you can't smile at people. No, I think can't. it's so, I, I look at, like you always had the best smile in the world. I love your smile. And I just think people need to see your smile. They can see it on Zoom. They can see it on House Party. You see it on, you know, whatever we go on, Instagram or whatever. But, but you can't see it when we have our mask on. And I, I just paint one, on my, one on, on my mask. Because one of the things, I smile because my mother always said it makes your face muscles stronger and you age less. <laughs> Right, and you smile, and look at you, you're aging less. And that's another thing I hate, you know, too. It's like, I'm so fair complexed, I hate that, too. I mean, I shouldn't say hate that, but that's just who I am. That's what God created me, but I just wish I was. I wish I had, like, you know, braces when I was younger, and I wish I had, you know, so it's all things that we wish we could change, and I wish I was dark all the time. I was like, oh, my God, if I had color, color, color. But, um, and I think same thing. Like, look at you. Like, I think you're so beautiful. So... Okay. Anyway, so keep, you girls keep smiling. You got to keep smiling. That's it. You got to smile. 
anybody have any other questions? Well, Gail, I, I love that you came on the show. I'm just so excited. And actually, what Gail is speaking about is a per precursor to our next show. Um, as I said, Auto Works Insights was to kind of expand your horizons so that you can go to five incomes if you chose to. Um, and our next show is going to be about innovation. It's called Innovate to Elevate. I love that. Don't you love that? And oh, my gonna God. Be, uh, Who's going to do that? That is so cool. Jeff Ponders the second. Oh, that's my book. That's one of my babies. Oh, I love him. And and the one thing I love about about Jeff is I actually met him because he plays a mean saxophone. Saxophone, the bomb. Yeah. And I, so I met him at Motor City Wine because we used to hang out there every Friday night. And then he would play there regularly with his band. And mm -hmm. this band plays the best saxophone ever. So one day I go up to him. I says, "Whoo." You know, what I'll do, do you do anything else? Because you play a mean saxophone, right? Yeah. It's actually, I'm an advertising executive. So I immediately went home and looked him up and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, but while he's being playing his jazz, that creativity flows into his business as an in advertising innovation person. Right. So next week, he's going to come and talk to us about innovation and how do you innovate to elevate yourself through this COVID crisis. Because he too has been extremely busy um, because people are calling on him to do work for them. And he has done work for General Motors, Disney, Walmart, uh, McDonald's. And so we are so lucky to have him. Um, yes, well, you just give him a big hug. Well, give him a big virtual hug. I need to check in on him. And so for some of you, I put the link to the next class in the chat box. I haven't posted it on, on, on our website yet, but if you want to go ahead and register for next week, please do so. Yeah, um, it just disappeared. Oh, it disappeared, but let me post it again. And sometimes you just have to open your chat and it, it'll come back. Um, I'm not sure how to open the chat. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, 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 the chat, what happens when you go to the chat at the bottom of your page, there is a bubble that has chat. Just oh, click on it. And it will pop up. Your okay. chat, and you can just leave it open if you chose. Because I'm not seeing that. Well, then I'll send it to you, Christine, separate. Okay, because I get used to this. <laughs> and see, and this is what. So, and, here, and here's the other reason why we're having these. We need to get accustomed to the virtual arena of life because even though COVID crisis is going to go away, this virtual stuff is not going away. It's not going to go away. You got that right. And so my thing is I want us as a community, particularly a black community, to invest in it because there are jobs that are, that are coming to a play because down the road, we're going to have a guy to show you how to get jobs that aren't, aren't even posted because that's his claim to fame and he's good at it. Wow. Um, we're going to have another recruiter come on board and talk about the hidden job market because there's jobs out there. And just to kind of give you a sense, my son has been working remote at home in Hartford, Connecticut. And... The, the cost of living from Rockford, Illinois to Hartford, Connecticut is a big difference. He was transferred there. So when he got there, he went, whoo, the difference between the cost of living is really different. So I said, go find a new job. He says, mom, we're in the middle of the COVID crisis. I said, you are a programmer. What does that mean? That means more opportunity right for you, right? So my child, who's 26 years old, started a new job on Monday, and he's making $103,000. So he went from 65,000 to 103. He has never physically seen him other than through Zoom. When he, he, so he's actually working out of his house in Hartford, Connecticut, which he'll do for the next month or so. And then he'll move to Boston and work out of his house for 30 days. And then if we're outside of the COVID crisis area, then he eventually will go and physically meet his boss. Wow. So, and he did all of this virtually online. So this is the new world. So even though is, we're, yeah. we're, we're gonna, we're, we may get out of the house, out of the shelter in place, we're going to live in a new normal. And this has opened up the world for companies. And they're not going back to the, the days of old. They're not going back to paying a lot of rent. So they're going to figure out how they're going to save money through virtual. They're not going to go to paying people to fly in and out of their companies when they can do it virtually they're going to do things a lot differently. So we as a people have to look at the trends that is happening through this crisis and say, how does it change our life? And how can I profit from what the changes that I see? Because there's a lot of change that happened so radically 
that a lot of that is not going backwards. I'll be very surprised that even some of the restaurants we go to are going to go back to dining because as one of my friends said to me, he's made more money doing drive through and carry out. He may not reopen his dining room. He may just stay right there. So wow. a lot of changes are happening and people are benefiting from it. The question is, are you? The second thing is there's a lot of business that's flowing. I, I looked yesterday, the Michigan Economic Development um, Council mm -hmm. put out some bids for PPE, personal protection equipment, mm -hmm. and gave out grants for people to make masks, to make gowns, to make those type of things. And they gave away a million dollars worth of grants. Some of the grants were small as $25,000 for a one-person shop. And some of them as high as 200,000, I think 150,000 was the max. And I only saw three companies in Detroit who actually won those grants because we're missing a lot of the opportunities because we're not seeing that in the middle of the crises of all of the things that are happening, that there are opportunities that are actually occurring. Yes. So I need, so we're going to talk about that as we keep coming down to Automation Works Insights. As we have our different speakers, we're also going to start posting more resources or where a lot of this activity is happening. So you can be able to, if you decide you want to do a business, this is your time to possibly jumpstart it, particularly um, because there's a lot of things that are changing.